Hello, golf fans. Welcome to another Roto Pros PGA preview video. I'm Chris Durrell. Joining me, as always, the other member of our PGA team, Dane Chenault. How's it going tonight, buddy? It's going good. Ready for a fun players week that got taken away from us last year. So, um, ready to hop in. Yeah, no doubt. Before we get started here, I want to tell you guys a little bit about uh, Thrive Fantasy, one of our newer sponsors. Uh, it's a new, it's a fairly new product. I'm going to just go over here and actually show you a little bit what the site looks like for PGA. It's going to look like this on your board. So what you're going to do here on Thrive Fantasy, you're going in, you have to pick five of these props. So this is round one, like Justin Thomas, 70 and a half strokes. Uh, it even goes like Bryson DeChambeau, uh, over under, uh, half an Eagle. Uh, there's birdie props, par props. There is 10 in total. You pick five. And then you're kind of competing in a contest like DraftKings and FanDuel. Uh, get in there, try that out. We're going to have links below. You can check out here below. 100% uh, match up to $50 on your first deposit as well. So we will flip back here. Um, we're going to talk about the course here in a second. Uh, I just want to get your feeling. Yeah, last year is pretty crazy. Uh, the biggest disappointment, biggest player that was probably disappointed was probably Hideki Matsuyama who started off with a 63 last year. <laughs> uh, absolutely <laughs> crazy. He went off nine under 63, and then it got canceled, I think, in like 22 events since. I was looking today. He's only got two top tens since that happened. So he was rolling before that, and that kind of derailed him here. So um, anyone else like just on that board or anything from last year that stood? I remember doing the video. Um, we were down in Arizona, and I remember locking myself in a room there and doing a video, and it uh day one was kind of looking good i was feeling excited after we did last year's video and uh then our uh you know everyone's world got rocked a little bit so it was definitely interesting but uh i guess what's your your initial thoughts and then we'll kind of jump into the course here yeah um last year was it was a weird time i guess for everybody still is i guess we've not fully mm -hmm. got back to normal so um from what I remember from last year is I had a couple guys that were doing really well and a couple guys doing really bad. So Maybe. I wasn't disappointed um, to have it canceled and refunded, but um, yeah, I'm ready to go in this week. Um, I think we got a pretty good feel for some of these guys who have uh, been trending well and, and we can keep riding that form for sure. Yeah, I agree with you. So, um, for this week, we're at TPC Sawgrass. It's a peat die design. Par 72, 7,189 yards. Uh, we got Bermuda Greens again. This is the, well, not counting last year's first round, but the second year, uh, this event um, back in March. Uh, it has ran, I believe, in May, mid, mid to late May, going back to all the way 2006. Um, so kind of keep that in mind, maybe look into some of the weather things and how 2019 played, maybe way 2019. If you're looking at course history, maybe a little bit more than 2018 and back, but uh, either way we can look at a, a solid course history. It's another one of those courses. I do rank course history a little bit higher. We do have smaller greens, as you can see, by just looking at the first hole here, uh, we have very narrow driving areas, a lot of trouble lurking. We usually see, in my opinion, we see a lot of um, less than driver off the tee just to kind of get your placement. There's a lot of dog legs. Pete Dye has a lot of, uh, in a lot of his designs will have dog legs going different directions after each other. No two holes going in the same direction. Um, kind of makes you think creative. And in, in a bit, it takes driving out of it. And it, it's shown kind of like last week's numbers we talked about last week just looking at the average drives there's only maybe two or three players in the top 10 top 15 every year at this event that average over 300 yards um, so definitely for me strokes gained approaches up there because of the small greens i'm looking at scrambling a lot strokes gain around the green that's going to be big for me so uh an all-around tee to green game is going to get you you know at least in the top five lurking on sunday for a win but if you're not good in one area, you can still get by and get a top 10 in this event. It's shown in the past guys have been terrible off the tee, um, but elite around the green and putting or vice versa. Maybe not as good putting, but the ball striking absolutely elite. So just because you're not good, at, you know, maybe down in one, you know, 50th to 60th in the field for the week, you can still make it in some of these other ones. But approach and around the green are going to be huge for me. How about yourself? <laughs> yeah, I think you touched on everything that I'm looking at for sure this week. Um, like you said, there's not going to be a massive amount of drivers off the tee. So that kind of negates 
you would think some of these bombers, but we have seen guys like Rory win here. So yep. um, really it is all about iron play um, and coming into these greens, there's trouble <laughs> on every shot. Um, and that's how we can see these surprise winners like Siwoo Kim. And that was just an insane year um, for some of the guys who missed the cut that year. And, um, obviously the winner, I think he was like 750 to one or something completely yeah. stupid when he won. So, um, this is a, a big boy field and a big boy event, but we can see some surprise low end winners, which would lead me to thinking stars and scrubs, but I'm actually <laughs> the way when I go through the player pool, I'm really liking the balance build. So I don't know how you're feeling about that, but um, I'll let you lead off this uh, top end range if you want to jump into the plays or you have anything else to say about yeah. the course. Yeah, so the Pete Dye thing, it's, you know, there's not a lot of course designers where I will, you know, break things down and actually look at who's good, who's not on Pete Dye course or on, on that certain course design. But Pete Dye's courses generally do um, give a lot of, like I said, holes, back-to-back holes that aren't running in the same direction we've got dog legs left followed by a dog leg right we've got water and play on 17 holes there's sand everywhere it really forces you off the tee just to kind of get in position and if if it's not to get in position it's to avoid danger um so just generally is i guess what i'm asking what i want to ask you is is pete die design is like a ranking looking at pete die like especially on fantasy national if you look at it over there you can get you can really break it down um, by you know whatever sample size you you want on the Pete Dye courses, um, is that something that you are looking at this week and concentrating on at all? Yeah, I think that's for sure. We we see that with a lot of different courses on tour that are Pete Dye courses. We see a lot of correlation and who plays well there. Um, like I mentioned, Si Wu, he's one of those guys. He, he, is. he just translates all across these Pete Dye courses. Um, they are just a little. There's a little nuance in a lot of parts of all of the courses that are Pete Dye. Um, it's mostly really around the green or, or become really difficult. And some of them is, is kind of what he prides himself on. But um, here he was given <laughs> this Florida course with tons of water. Oh yeah. Um, and it, it just makes it a, it's a tough course, but if you're on your game, it's so it's pretty short. So you can shoot a low number like we saw with Hideki last year. So there's, you could potentially see guys sh- that are pretty good in this field shooting five, six, seven over <laughs> in a round. And you, if they, if it gets away from them and you can see guys like Hideki last year shooting nine under. So <laughs> that's kind of the range of outcomes. And that's why it's just so crazy, but I'll definitely be looking um, at, at some Pete die history. If only as a tiebreaker. Awesome. No. And that kind of leads me in. You said uh, it, it plays really tough and I just kind of flipped through all the holes on the course here, um, looking at 17 now, I mean, the water everywhere, you'd think it would play as like a top five, top 10 hardest course. In actuality, the last five years, this event played here, 23rd, 29th, 5th, um, that was 2016, 2017, and then 29th and 18th. So it's ranked outside the top 15 uh, four of the last five years. So yeah, you're right. It, you can, I think by putting yourself in the right position off the tee, um, the guys that are, you know, really dialed in with their irons that week. And I'm looking at this 175 to 200 and then 200 plus range just because uh, they are dialing back. Um, you know, when you start looking at your Bryson's, who's going to go for it in a lot of these holes, not go for the green, but um, really start attacking the angles like we've seen last week with that amazing drive on hole six on Saturday. Um, he even did it on Sunday, maybe not to the same extreme, but he's willing to go that far and, you, you know, really push the distance where some of these other guys will definitely uh, roll back a bit, uh, 280, 285. 290 pushing it off the tee um so i think you can definitely make birdie if you're on with your irons and the weather actually that kind of leads me in a little bit before i talk about any players here i wanted to mention uh the weather as well looking at this week so thursday we've got uh you know wet about 59 to mid 60s in terms of temperature we've got uh wind in the 9 10 mile an hour range same with friday saturday you know, it looks really good up until Sunday afternoon, like late. So that could really provide something down the stretch. It was something we want to pay attention to, but much less this week. I'm not really uh, concerned at all. And then just jumping into the cheat sheet here, it kind of leads me into my top play, everything that we just kind of talked about there. Um, Patrick Cantley stands out to me. He's going to be my top play. 
overall this week, just 9,200. I believe he was 9,800 here last year. Just seems like a really low price for him, just considering the form. Um, T15, T3, T2 in his three events this year. Uh, the ball striking is absolutely elite right now. The putter let him down. I believe that's what uh, that T15 came from last week, but he's definitely number one for me. And then Webb Simpson, um, he's won here in 2018. He's coming in with some form. Uh, the other correlation course that I was kind of looking at, I mentioned in chat today, is Sedgefield um, with the Wyndham. And the Wyndham? Is it the Wyndham Championship? I believe so. Yeah, I was there last year. Yeah. <laughs> Um, Webb, Webb's won there too. So that, that stands out for me. And I mean, building a lineup around a guy that's 95 and 9,200, you can go almost any other direction possible. I, you know, I haven't looked too deep into this mid range. I was looking more stars and scrubs to start the day, but, uh, starting your lineup off with those two, I absolutely love it. Both I'm betting both guys outright as well. I have done that already at 20, uh, listed here. This is from bet 365, but I got them at 25 to one on uh, cool bet. Who, who are you looking at in the top range? Yeah, so I'm kind of on the same wavelength as far as I'm kind of liking the idea of skipping this top range so that I can play multiple guys in the low nines or something like that type of build you just talked about. Um, I, I don't know what you would call that as far as a build because you can jam in those and it still starts in scrubs, I feel like, because you might have to take a low seven or a 6K guy if you play – two to three of those guys in the 9K range. But um, obviously any of those in the 10K plus can, can go out and, and win an event and dominate. Dustin Johnson, um, I know you got a take on him later <laughs> on probably for betting, um, but lost 10 strokes putting last time out. He can always go out and do it, but I just like being able to pair some of these guys down here. Uh, my favorite is right there with you, um, Patrick Cantlay. He opened here with five under last yeah. year, um, 23rd and 22nd, 18 and 17. Um, like you said, form coming in, 9,200 is crazy. And I've already bet him as well, 25 to one. I think that number is crazy. I think it's five too high. Um, or I could even see him being 18 to one, and I wouldn't be surprised. So um, I'm in on Cantlay. And the other guy right here that I'm definitely in on is Morikawa. I'm going to go right back to him. Um, I can't – what I just saw out of him with his tee to green play um, is definitely has me on him this week. 9400 is a fair price. Um, I just don't know if they're ever going to price him like the way that he's, he's ranked. He's top five player in the world, in the world rankings. Um, and they just keep leaving him down here. I bet him as well, 22 to one. They're never going to cross him into the no. low, uh, below 20, I don't think. It just don't feel like. So I'm going to keep pounding um, on him. I think he's the best iron player in the world right now, um, even better than a Justin Thomas or, or somebody. But I think Morikawa, is, he's going to have a massive career. He played here, you would think – it was his debut he did play here last year I guess this is technically his debut but he was here and opened with my, uh four under 68 last year so at least he's seen the course in tournament conditions and, and played pretty well the other guy that I wanted to get your take on is Justin Thomas 9900 um is about the, I don't know if we've seen him below 10 in quite a while um what, what do you think about Justin Thomas? That betting number two is above 20 for the first time in a long time. Oh. Um, I, think, I think his game can translate here, he's been, but he's been god awful off the tee um, lately. I don't know how he lost six strokes putting and then gained almost 10 on approach at the concession. So um, I'm not sure where that came from, but he's lost strokes off the tee in three of his uh, four events of the calendar year. Um, what do you think there? I love the iron play. I love the price. I love the betting number. Uh, like you said, we haven't seen these numbers on him, you know, him below 10K on DraftKings, him below 12K really on FanDuel on some of these uh, events. Um, the betting number, like a 20 to 1, uh, 22 to 1, and they can get him in some places I'm seeing here still. The off the tee has yeah. been just disastrous. The putter bounced back after the Genesis, which was good. He lost almost six strokes um, there. So it's coming back, but like on a round-to-round -round basis, the 
it's just so up and down right now. Um, I think for me right now, I've got him as probably going to be on the betting card and my betting card's way too big already. Um, these guys at like around 20 to, I just absolutely love like at any other event, we're seeing these guys in the 12 to like 220 range. They're not getting over those 20 numbers. So, um, I definitely like that, but, uh, I, from a round around basis with the ball striking, I just can't. And the, the around the green hasn't been great either. He's like outside the top 40 in the field over the last 24 rounds around the green. Um, so for, for DFS right now, I'm, I'm off of them just because we talked about Webb Simpson and Cantley. I like Rory McIlroy um, up there as well. Third most expensive and amazing course history here coming in like two top tens, like definitely disappointing seeing a T6 and a T10. If you're playing Rory, he let me down in DFS last week, um, playing the 20 max. I think I only ended up with like 21 bucks because I was about 60% Rory, 50 to 60% Rory in my lineups. It's looking all right. Uh, even the five of sixes going into the weekend and into Sunday, but he really just crashed on Sunday, which a crash to top 10. Uh, doesn't seem like a crash, but uh, um, so he's coming in with form. Like the irons are there. He's one. He, he's the last guy that won here. He's had good success. So I think Thomas is going to be super low owned. And if it looks like that Wednesday night, I might have to jump on that. Maybe in a few GPPs, or maybe throw another three max in there, or a single entry with Thomas um, playing off the the ownership projections on Wednesday. Um, but other guys that we didn't mention here. You mentioned Morikawa, Simpson, Cantley. They're all under 10K. So I also like Hovland in there. Uh, the His irons have been on. Uh, he's T49 in the last event, but uh, the irons have been on. And last year he opened. He was right there with Morikawa, opened with the 68 yeah. here last year as well. Um, so in that top range is absolutely loaded. If you're building 20 max, I could easily see, like if you're in an op- using an optimizer to do it, or even 150 max, I could easily see just Xing out all the guys from 10 K and up um, all the guys, maybe from like uh, 6,900 and down um, and just build a balanced core. You could, I, I like doing that for 20 max. I like doing that for, you know, if you're doing it for 150 max, the way I like would, would go about doing that is build three different builds of 50 uh, lineups and put them in. So one build of 50 would be those filters uh, right there. And if you're doing it by hand, that's how I'm going to be doing it for 20 max this week. Um, I probably going to do two 20 maxes so that I can do one like that. And then the other 20 max will mix in some of those top guys. Yeah, for sure. Um, you mentioned Hovland. Uh, he, he would be the guy right behind those two. I just love it. <laughs> Tons of people in this range. Um, so I, I'm definitely going to be skipping the 10 K range this week. Um, no matter how many lineups I'm building, uh, <laughs> that's just the way I want to go. I want, different combinations of um, this 9K group because Hovland, do you think people are going to jump off of him after the weekend that he had? Uh, A combination of that plus Cantley, Simpson, Morikawa, uh, even Rory at only 10-6, which is fairly low for him. I think the combination of that will keep Hovland. Um, You know, bigger GPPs like your 20 maxes, you'll probably see him Geez, I bet you 12%, 12, 15 max, I think, for Hovland, um, because I think Webb, Cantley, Rory, those three, I think, uh, approach the 25% range in GPPs. Cantley, maybe even yeah. 30%. I'm still yeah, playing I him. I don't so care. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he, he's one of those guys for sure that I'll be playing regardless. But that, um, again, is something in, you know, I said I'm building two 20 maxes. I'll probably do like the dollar. And then the three dollar twenty max, and you know the riskier one, I'll do the dollar. So maybe like all my fade Cantley, fade the chalk guys. And if that happens to be, you know, looking at FanShare Sports Wednesday night, looking at Fantasy National, seeing the top three guys in ownership, I might just X them out, the top three projected ownership guys across multiple sites, and then build lineups around guys pivoting, you know, pivoting guys off of them in one 20 max build. And then the other one just chalky and not really giving a shit at all, just playing Cantley and Simpson in like 60%. And like you said, get as many combinations of them as possible. Yeah. I love that. Yeah. Love it. So yeah, that was a good talk on just overall lineup construction. Cause really you, you always are starting at the top um, almost every single week. I mean, some weeks where the field's really bad, and there's like only one elite player, I'll dip down to the 7K range first 
and kind of just really try and nail down because I know it's going to be stars and scrubs, but this isn't one of those weeks. Um, and we just kind of described why. So if we go down into, um, you know, balance land here in the uh, mid 7K to uh, 8,900 range, who are a couple of players that stand out to you? And if you're trying to maybe jam two or three of those sub uh, 10K guys, those 9K range guys. Yeah, so it's cross right over the 9K mark, and there's still guys that I want I want some exposure to if I'm building more than two to three lineups. Um, Reed, um, right on the 9K mark, I've already bet him as well, 40 to 1. He didn't play very great last time out, but the two before that he was on fire. Um, and he's a guy that when he gets up to those numbers, you just need to, to bet him because he can go out and win. Um, he might be a guy that I'll leave off um, if I'm trying to get other guys in DFS, but I've definitely got uh, the bet in on him at 40. Berger is another guy um, in great form still. Um, 8800 is a fair price. Hideki, uh, the iron play is coming around. Maybe I don't know if people are going to go to him or not at 8800, 8700, um, but hey, opened with nine under last year. Maybe he wants some. I can already see the um, the storyline come Thursday or Friday when Hideki's like five or six under and the golf channel's talking about him getting revenge after last year. You yep. can already see that. So um, I would want some exposure to him. Not sure he would be a guy that I would go to in, like, in a three max build, but 20, I would for sure get exposure. And then speed. I'm just tired of fading this guy because every time – um, I opened my phone up um, during the weekend. He's making hole in ones or chipping <laughs> in. So um, Ruining I my think he card. is back. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think he's back. I, I don't know what else to say. I mean, he's getting – his iron play has been great three of the last four weeks, except for the Genesis is the only event that he lost strokes. Um, off the tee has been flat for the last three events that he's played, which then translates – to these finishes, fourth, third, 15th, fourth. I mean, I, I don't know what else to say about Spieth because I, I do think he's back. He's obviously getting lucky on some, some of these shots, but, hey, he's done that his whole career. So maybe the time I jump on him is when he completely just um, trash cans. But I think I would want exposure to him in 20 max. 8,600 is still fair because when we get to the Masters, if he's still playing like this, the guy's going to be like 10K. Um, so I would maybe go ahead and jump on now. Um, what about you? I mean, there's a lot, of, there's some guys once we cross the seven K or cross the eight K mark that I like, but nobody really else here in the eights. Um, I'm going to, I think Spieth and Matsyam, I'll, I'll start with Matsyam. I think he's going to be high owned. The narrative's there from last year already. You can already see it. Um, he finished with a T8 the year before that in 2019. He had a top 10 back in 2016, um, back-to-back top 20s coming in. So I think he's going to be uh, popular with that balance build that we talked about. <coughs> Excuse me. Yeah. Um, but I'll, I'll have more of him. I, I'm fading Spieth myself. Um, I think he's going to be high-owned as well coming in with form. But And at that price at 8,600 because we've been seeing him, you know, in that 9K range. He's been making a lot of birdies. The Pete Dye thing stands out to me here. This not just this course because he's finished 92nd, 41st, 97th, 77th, 103rd, uh, T4 back in 2014, the first time he came, but he's missed the cut in four of his last five here. And I just kind of looking at his ball striking here at, at or sorry, on Pete Dye courses just in general, because he's ranked 58th in the field over the last 24 round on Pete Dye courses. Um, and this is getting a little deep into it, but I'm really picking hairs here to try and get my core narrowed down as much as I possibly can for these 20 max builds and his ball striking. He's only gained strokes both off the tee and an approach once in the last like 13 rounds. Um, and only twice in like the last 16 rounds um, on Pete Dye courses, the around the green game that we usually expect from him hasn't been there. Maybe some of that goes back into 2018 as well and 2019. So that could be with his actual form. So is that just, something i'm going off of alone no it, it's it's uh ownership driven as well i will d- definitely check that on wednesday night and once again when i miss out on these players that i talk about in the video i definitely try and hammer them when they have an awesome first round in showdown so keep that in mind i'm never never missing a player 
<laughs> you got to stay happy. <laughs> you you got to make yourself stay happy for four days, even when like your main lineups are already <laughs> dead on Thursday. <laughs> <laughs> but no, I, I think you're right. I think um, those two are going to be popular there. I love the read call. Uh, what did you say? You seen a number on him? I got him at like 41 to one. Yeah, I got 40. Yeah, love that number on him. Uh, that's right around where I, I think I had him for the Masters two years ago, 2019 Masters. And it, so I he hasn't been really that number many times since then. Maybe these small field WGCs or something. But uh, I flocked down to the kind of the bottom of this range. Um, I kind of opened it up to the mid-7K up to there. I like Zalatoris again. Uh, I shared that with you in chat this morning. Uh, I got to find that. It must have been early, early this morning because I, I had it here and I can't find it now. <laughs> Suspense is killing me. <laughs> oh, uh, this was from Monday Q Info on, on Twitter. Because it needs to be said in his last two seasons across the Corn Ferry Tour and PGA, Will Zalatoris has 27 to 28 cuts, 15 of them top 10s, 23 top 25s. That's 82% top 25 rate. Absolutely crazy. Uh, the ball striking, uh, the price, especially at 7,600, I love. Um, so I'm going to be on. He gained four point. He's gained over three and a half strokes on approach in each of his last three events. The putters let him down the last two uh, big time. But if he comes back with like a Genesis putting uh, where he gained four strokes, I'll to even take like one to two strokes gained on the putting with this kind of ball strike. And he's going to be inside the top 10 at 7,600. That's absolutely crushing that price. So I think I might even take a shot with him uh, outright. And I got 71 to one right now. Um, so I'm even looking at that. What are your thoughts on him going forward? Yeah, I, I love Zalatoris. And another reason to like him even more, it is his debut here. Um, but 7,600 with the way that he's playing, um, he does not have to win for you. If he gets you a top 15, top 10, you are dancing on Sunday afternoon. So 7,600 is, is a great price with that kind of form. I don't, I don't know if he'll get popular or not, but he's another guy that I'll be playing regardless. I'll get different elsewhere. Um, and I did go ahead and bet him. I got 75 to one. Um, he's going to break through. Maybe he's one of the surprise guys here on debut. Um, other guys in the 7K range that I really like is, is Neiman. Um, I, I just like him every week. I can't even <laughs> say anything else about He's a birdie him. machine. He's um, an absolute birdie machine. He is, for sure. He gets on these runs that um, he'll just make tons of birdies for you in a row. Um, and, again, similar to Zalatoris, 7,700. Um, you can pair him in those balanced builds and he does not, he's not one of the guys that has to win for you. Like he is in some of these, um, other events when he's close to nine K or something, um, 7,700 is a steal. Um, and then the last guy I'll mention, um, is Fleetwood. I'm, I'm going to go back to him. Um, because another reason below eight K, he does not have to win. I don't think he's going to win because, after Sunday, I had him last week outright. Um, that was very disappointing um, when he started missing the short putts mm, and yeah. three putting from 10 feet. Um, anyway, um, 7,900, <laughs> though, he's been fifth and seventh uh, in 2019 and 18 here. Um, and he played well last week except off the tee. He, was, he gained 4.7 on approach. Um, that's what we like to see from Tommy. So um, he's a, another guy who can go super low for you. Um, he did open with plus six last year, but we know he's got the, he's got the course history with a fifth and a seventh. So I, he was one of the guys I was on last year that was not doing very well. Um, wow. so, um, I'll, I'll be going back to Fleetwood though. Nice. Uh, one guy just kind of dipping a little bit below there. I'm with you on Neiman and going back to him being a birdie machine, looking at my sheet, I got 90% weight on this year's stats, 10% on last year's stats. He's fifth in this elite field in birdie or better percentage um, with those weights on. So that's absolutely amazing for him. I really love that birdie potential at 7,700. Like a top 25, top 30 with the amount of birdies that he racks up, I think uh, can definitely get you there at 7,700 this week. Uh, Corey Connors going a little bit lower. I'll be going back to him uh, at that price for sure. If he was in the 8K range or even the high 7K range, I'd probably – I'm. 
I'm not too sure, how, you know, how he's going to rebound after getting that close last week. Uh, you know, almost nailed another hundred to one, Dane. It was really rough. This is I've been final round uh, guy within a stroke or having the lead at a hundred and one to one, but uh, his ball striking is what really draws me to him again. We talk about it a lot. He's got a pretty good track record here. Um, or sorry, not here at Pete Dye courses, T41 here in 2019. But on Pete Dye courses, he's gained strokes on approach in five of his last six events. He's gained uh, strokes around the green in five of his last seven and gained strokes putting in three of his last four, which we don't really see, and five of his last seven as well. So um, just seems like there's a lot working for him at 7,400. And I don't think we need him to contend again at 7,400. He's kind of in that same boat. Uh, as Neiman for me, where, you know, we can definitely take a top 25 this week, um, you know, with as long as he gets some birdies. We're going to see some bogeys out there for everyone. But uh, if he can put some birdie streaks and stuff like that together, I think he can pay off. Um, so I've kind of just kind of jumped right over the 8K range with my picks. I've, I've got multiple in the 7K and in the 9K is kind of where I've concentrated on early in the week. So I'll probably dig in a little bit deeper into – uh, ownership for sure, and just kind of see where builds are for my second one. But that's kind of where I'm going to in my, you know, my core 20 max. That'll be like the three dollar one, or I think a four dollar. I'm not sure how that works. I think the four dollars for NASCAR, the three dollars for PGA in terms of 20 max. But that's kind of the way I'm building. Do you have any takes on Connors getting close and uh, missing? And this week rebounding, I guess, how he's going to rebound. I was on him last week, too, on DFS. Um, I played him, but I did not outright bet him, so I did not have um, the heartbreak that you had. He, I mean, he was solid uh, for a lot of the weekend, really. Um, I think he can rebound, definitely, and he's playing very well. Um, seven strokes on approach last week. That was easy to see watching him. So um, I think that's a, a nice call. He's um, – 7,400 is a great price for him. There's a few guys down here that are um, perpetually underpriced that I'll be going to. One of those is not Ricky Fowler. Um, <laughs> it's over. We'll just take a second. We're just going to take a second on Ricky, and, and I'm going to talk about him. But this is just – I don't know what is going on with this guy. Oh. I understand he's going through swing changes – He's probably got the pressure on him that he's not in the Masters and everything, but this is absolutely brutal. I mean, he's fallen into, like, Smiley Kaufman territory yeah. here. Um, it's just so inconsistent, too. He's been awful in one aspect of his game one week, and he's awful all around the next, and then he's awful in just one. I mean, last week he lost – he made the cut, but he lost seven strokes putting yeah. on the week. That is absolutely brutal. And the week before that, he gained five putting, or a few weeks before that at the Genesis, and lost four and a half on approach. Um, and then obviously at way Pebble out. Beach, he was just god awful everywhere. Everywhere. Yep. Um, I'm not playing him. This is a, I guess, an Taking enticing a price. If we, if we, <laughs> if we get a few um, casual guys, maybe they'll hop on Ricky down here at seventy four. Um, I mean, he has won here before. That was a year that it just felt like his week. Um, I will not be going there, not with the guys we have around him. So um, two guys that I'll mention, and then I'll, I'll let you, because I've not dug in a lot below these two guys um, yet this week. Harris English, 75, he's kind of – he's been awful, except for last week, Tita Green. He looked like he might have found something. He was kind of flat and gaining strokes off the tee, but he gained four on approach, which he had not done uh, this year. Um, lost four, lost two, lost one. The three events before that looked like he was falling off the face of the earth, and then he comes back with the 26th. When he got down um, to the Arnold Palmer last week, he lost two putting, which is usually the strength of his game. So 7,500 is a fine GPP shot there. Um, not a high on guy that I'm going to jam in a bunch of lineups, but I'll, I'll have him, um, probably 20, 25% maybe, um, down here in the value range. Lanto Griffin's another guy I've been riding him all year yeah. and this run of form is, I'm going to continue it. Uh, seventh at the farmers, 26th at the Genesis, 22nd at concession, 
21st last week. Um, pulling up Fantasy National, it is nice pulling up his recent form. All you see is green except for a couple of, couple boxes there. Um, mm-hmm. He gained strokes everywhere last week. Um, just solid all-around game, finishing 21st. The week before that, still in Florida as well. Um, pretty good off the tee and gained four on approach. So I'm going to keep riding that. Um, I think this is technically his debut, right? He's not – yeah. Yep. Um, last yep. year he did – shoot a 71 one under uh, which is kind of mid pack after one round but um he's in great form and 7300 i'll be back on him yeah i like that i got three guys down here um actually that i like so it's gonna probably lead me to getting three of those guys in the 9k range together um the way yeah. you kind of building out right now from what i like first of all uh sam burns I think he's going to be lower on. He kind of, you know, a lot of people were tilting Thursday and Friday on Sam Burns big time. So I think because of his ownership, I he was one of my fades last week. Um, I was, I faded Hatton. That didn't work out. I faded Molinari, or I didn't fade Molinari. I went, we went heavy on Molinari and he crushed us. But uh, one of the fades that did work for me uh, was Burns. I'm going to go back to him this week. He's been just solid with the irons. Gained 6.8 strokes of the Genesis before that, the week before. Um, the putter has been pretty hot lately and is generally, um, he gains like over his last five events, he's gained 3.4 strokes per event. Last 10 events, two strokes per event. So he's got the putter that always backs him up. It's around the green game that kind of concerns me a little bit, but the low ownership, low price, and possible, you know, low scores that he can put up with lots of birdies in there as well. He stands out. Um, one thing on the sheet, that we I don't talk about a lot that I do look at down here a lot in the value range is the salary to odds differential. So pretty much it's just ranking all the players odds to win um, their DK rank and FanDuel rank, and then just kind of giving you a differential of those rankings to kind of see if we can maybe point out someone that's maybe under or overpriced compared to their odds. Uh, someone that stood out to me this week that I dug into a little bit is uh, Christian. And of course it had to be someone I can barely say his name, Christian Bazudenhoot. Or Bazudenhout, I I can never get it right, but uh, he's 34th in the world. Uh, he's 71 to one to win. That's 26 best odds to win in the field. Um, on FanDuel, it's not great. He's 28th uh, ranked in salary, but he's 51st on DraftKings. So that stands out to me at 7100. And in that you know range uh, of pricing on DraftKings, he's 71 to one to win. He's surrounded by guys in the 140s all the way up to 250 to one to win. So that really stands out to me um, a lot. And he's coming in with some nice form T7 last week and he lost strokes on approach. What really, what I like to see here is that he has been elite around the green and putting. And we got to see him quite a bit last week uh, on golf channel, I think showed him quite a bit. And then even, I think he was one of the groups on PJ tour live too, but uh, he played really well around the green and putting. So if he gets those iron, irons going at all, he, he could put up another top 10 or, you know, be on the leaderboard on Sunday at a $7,100 price tag on DraftKings. I absolutely love. And then finally, uh, I've been on him for a while here, uh, riding his high is Chris Kirk. Um, he's had uh, three top 15s here in his last five trips. He withdrew in 2016, so I took that one out. But he's made the cut here in seven of his last eight trips at this course and his form is excellent right now he's coming off a t8 last week gained seven and a half strokes t to green um gained strokes in every strokes gain area uh back to back not back to back weeks back to back events at the arnold palmer and uh at&t that is uh, pebble beach it says pro-am here i'm just looking at fantasy national but it wasn't the pro-am this year but at pebble beach so two solid finishes there he missed the cut at the waste management before that it was a t16 at the amex and uh i believe the amex is a pete die course as well um i have to go back and look i don't have it right here beside me but then uh a second at the sony as well so his form is on the ball striking's there the, around the green the putting uh, so he just really stands out to me, course history as well, and the price tag at seven thousand. That is someone I would play in cash games. I'd probably, if you're playing cash games this week, it would be Kirk. Uh, how I would rank those kind of low end guys? It would be Kirk for me at his price. Probably Corey Connors next, and then uh, probably Bazudenhut and uh, Sam Burns is more of a GPP play for me in this area. Kind of hoping that he is sub ten percent owned 
while these other guys are kind of in that 10 to 12, 14% range. Any thoughts on any of those guys? Yeah, I, I did look at Bazudin Hoot. Um, but is he just a, like a short hitter? Um, yeah, what do we got here? He's um, got to be. I mean, with the strokes he's lost. Yeah, off 287. The 287. <laughs> One of the okay, lowest so, drive distance in the field. So that kind of makes it a little better for him. I mean, if you're looking at his odds, I mean, his stats, if you look at off the tee, he's not gained off the tee on the PGA Tour like in the last year except for a, a tournament he missed the cut, at the, mm-hmm. the Rocket Mortgage. But if that is just really due to – him being a short hitter that is negated a bit here um and like you said he's great great around the green so uh, maybe he's worth a shot for sure yeah i think the the floor i think is pretty good on him like i don't think he like just with his long irons aren't great like he's 122nd in the field over the last 24 rounds so being short off the tee and not great with long irons isn't great but having that uh, elite around the green and putting I think gives him a high floor to, um, you know, at least get through the cut and end of the weekend. I don't see anything more than like a T, you know, 40 T 30 from him, unless something amazing happens. Vegas seems to really like him here. Um, but, uh, you know, that's why I kind of like Kirk a little bit more for, for floor and more of an upside, but I really love Burns upside. If we're talking upside GPP plays Burns for me, um, just combination of low ownership, his ball striking, um, and people being pissed off from last week. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I like I like Burns for sure. He's always played pretty well down in Florida too, I feel like. Um, so, yeah, that kind of goes over, you know, our, our plays. It kind of gives you our build. We're both kind of really leaning on that balance build this week. So, um, in terms of, say, one and done, do you have a couple players that you've narrowed it down? I know we really, really didn't hit last week again. Um, I, I went Molinari myself. (laughs) It was just all around. I bet Molinari. I had like 35, 40% of them in DFS. He just really let me down. And I'm glad I don't have to look at his face, um, on that one and done page again for the rest of the year. Who are you leaning so far? (laughs) Uh, Cantley, um, I think will be popular, but I, I do like him for sure. Um, maybe, I don't know how popular he'll be, but maybe Justin Thomas is the guy to burn here. I don't, I don't know. I mean, this is a big event, one of the top five of the year. Um, I don't, maybe you burn Justin Thomas. I mean, you, you've got to take one of these top end guys. Um, maybe people are off JT at this point. Um, I mean, he's been decent, but not great. Not the normal JT. Maybe we hop on him when everybody else wants to go up and take a DJ Rom Rory type guy. Yeah. I think Cantley's probably Cantley and Webb, I think will probably be one, two, wouldn't you think in probably ownership yeah. for that same as kind of DFS it's, it's um, I think Rory will take some ownership there as well. Um, I like the Justin Thomas play, especially, you know, if, if we were say top 10 in our contest, even top 100 in a, in a contest that size, um, I probably wouldn't take that risk, but being from being coming from behind, being that he's going to be very low owned, I think in, in everything DFS and whatever, I really like using that same GPP kind of strategy uh, going for him, because if you get uh, Cantley and Webb finish outside the top 10, not even outside the top 10, when you're looking at the difference from first, that gets like 1.3, 1.4 million in most contests. Um, I think everything goes off of that, that uh, winning prize money anyway, but uh the, the gap between say first and even fifth is, is huge to where you don't really need Cantley and Webb to totally tank this week. Um, but if Thomas wins and they finish even fifth to 10th, you're doing awesome. If they finish, you know, outside the top 20, one of them, even you're, you know, you're making a huge jump up the leaderboard in your one and done contest. So it, it really comes down to where you're sitting at this point in the season. If you're, you know, you're split up into sections of the season, um, so it really comes down to your contest, but I, I'm with you there. I think right now it's, it's Weber Cantley or, you know, fa- or going the GPP route with Thomas or possibly even just going up to DJ. I know a lot of people used him um, earlier for his win. Uh, I seen the ownership was pretty fairly high in him that week. So might go to him here, but again, it's risky just because like you said, he lost 10 strokes putting last week. Uh, is he going to rebound to like five strokes lost putting, or is he going to like just have a, 
you know, a huge week where he gains two or three strokes. Um, he kind of seems like a player that can kind of do that, just jump from a terrible form round in, in putting to just boom, all of a sudden top five in the field the very next week. So that's why I'm kind of, um, well, I'm betting on him, and that, which kind of leads me into our bets here with DJ. Um, so I do like him for one and done a little bit if you're going the risky road. I like him for betting simply because uh, last week's show, uh, we kind of talked about what DJ's price would be after losing 10 strokes putting. Um, I thought 12 to 1, and in most places he was 12 to 1. I was quite happy to hit that. Still wasn't going to bet him. But then on Cool Bet this morning, when they came out, he was 14 to 1. So I had to go and put 25 bucks down on him just because I said I would. So that's why I bet DJ. Normally, I wouldn't <laughs> have done that. Uh, we've been kind of concentrating in that 20, 30 to 1, 40 to 1 range. There's a lot of value in that range. That's kind of what we've been chasing lately and then kind of mixing in with some uh, deeper guys in the field. Um, so for betting purposes, I think you mentioned a few of yours already. So I'm with you on Cantley. I've got Simpson in there as well. I bet Sam Burns. I just, he's one of my long shots. I got him at 125 to one. I have 101 to one at bet 365. I got him at 125 on cool, but I just couldn't avoid that price uh, coming off. You know, he's shown us that upside, that winning upside. So it, it's just another long shot. I've been getting pretty close on long shots lately. I'm going to hit one of them. Um, I also went down, I think Zalatoris was one I slipped in there as well. I really liked the number on. And then I just jumped on Patrick Reed with you at 40 to one as well. And then one yeah. thing I wanted to mention, um, it really sucked missing on Connors last week for the win. It would have been, I think I bet him five bucks at a hundred to one. So 500 bucks. I also bet him top 10. And I think with him top 10 was, uh, I want to say four to one, um, no five to one. So I had 10 bucks on that on the top tens usually is what I bet. So I got some money back there that helped out. And then final round, just, I was really concerned about Bryson and his momentum going into Sunday. So I put 35 bucks on him. It's, I think he was 3.35 to one or 3.4 to one or something Sunday morning. So I ended up doing, uh, just breaking even, uh, actually a little, I think I had a little bit of profit, like 15 bucks or something like that. But, uh, one thing I wanted to mention, any of these guys that you're betting, maybe not the 20 to one so much, but anything outside 40 to one for me, 30, 40 to one and deeper in the field. If you can't get a each way on them, which is just an exact same bet, usually you get top five, top eight odd, or top eight finish, um, bet a top five, bet a top 10. Um, it can definitely save your week. It can definitely save you mentally um, from going insane when you're just continually missing these outrights by one or two <laughs> strokes on Sunday afternoon. Um at least you can look at your account after you can look at your balance and you're at least breaking even or getting a small profit with your top tens and twenties. I play that kind of like cash games um, for DFS, kind of the same kind of strategy. So I'll, I'll lead that in. So like Connors, um, I probably would bet like another top 10, top 20. If you're betting him outright, Sam Burns, I'm betting him outright. So I will throw um, another $5 or $10 bet on his top 10, uh, maybe even stretch it to a top 20 if the odds are right. But uh who and which direction are you going at with the rest of your card? Anything? Yeah, so I've kind of got a full card already. You kind of mentioned you are pretty full as well. Oh, yeah. Um, or filling up. But I, I've got five guys, and that's usually about the max that I'll do, um, especially with the range that I stayed in this week. I went at 22 Morikawa, 25 Cantlay, 40 for Reed and then 75 for both Neiman and uh, Zalatoris. I like that. Definitely. So that uh, we went over DK. I kind of want to, I kind of want to lay that, lay down a mark here um, okay. on this show. Um, I, I think there is a chance that before the end of the calendar year, 2021, that Colin Morikawa can be the number one player in the world. Okay, I'm going to write this down. Morikawa. And I'm going to timestamp this as well, and I'll share this for sure. I like it. <laughs> That's not <laughs> far-fetched. As crazy as yeah. that is, what is he, four in the world right now? It number sounds four. crazy, like, on the surface. But, it, yeah, he's number four in the world. He's only behind DJ, Rom, and JT. Um, I mean, the guy can win a major this year. If he wins a, a major, he's already got a WGC. Um, I mean, I think he's one of the – he's ranked like it, and I think he's one of the top few players in the world, and I think he can get to number one for sure. 
Yeah, I mean, from four, I don't know exactly how the point system works, but if he wins, you know, like two more regular events or one regular and one major, I think that would probably put him there there this year. Um, so I don't think that's crazy bold, that bold of a call at all, um, to be honest with you. So I, I'm 100% there. You had me scared there for a minute. I, you thought you were going to make a mark on, like, you weren't going to let me bet uh, <laughs> DJ anymore or something like that. I don't know. Um but, yeah, uh, I mean, I think this is a time to um, – right before some of these big events, I know he just won, but you could go and bet him – I mean, I love him at all the majors this year, except maybe the, the British Open. Um, I'm, I'm not super confident in him there, but the U.S. Open, I think he can, he can win that at Torrey Pines. Um, he's 22 to 1 there. That's not great. Um, and then <laughs> – but it's fine. Um, if he goes out and wins this week, he's not going to be 22. Um, but PGA Championship down in Kiowa, um, another place I think could suit him. Everywhere can suit this guy. I mean, that's the thing. He's He's got the mental toughness to win in these big events. Um, and he's, I think, the best iron player, like I said, in the world. So um, yeah. at the PGA, he's 25. I think that's a fair number. And I understand the Masters. He's not played the Masters, right? No. He was one of the ones that – Oh, got, this fall, yeah. this he Did he not play this fall? Who was it who didn't get to – oh, that was – That's Berger. Berger. That was Berger. Because um, the qualification – I don't know. I can't even March. remember how he done. <laughs> but he's 28 to 1 um, at the Masters. That, I mean, that's a fine number with the form he's in. Um, and the iron play that he's got, he was 44th. I mean, he at least made the cut. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Wasn't great, but it was his debut. So, and that's um, a course. I think that's a fair number too, 28 to one. So, hey, I'm with you. I, I'm, I'm really high on Morikawa. I have been for a long time. Just the way that he, he was the guy last year that was, he was the eagle maker, is what we remember from him. He was, he was like leading in eagle rate. Yeah. I, I feel like he was always the guy you'd pull up and he would be in the fairway on the par five and then he'd be six feet, eight feet, 10 feet for eagle. <laughs> um, but yeah, I, I really like Morikawa. Him and uh, Cantley this week are the top two for me for sure. And on top of all the stats with Morikawa, which he can win at any course, he, he's shown he can contend at any course. Um, is just the mental aspect when he has, you know, a few bad shots, puts one in the water, gets in trouble in the bunker, gets a double bogey, even a bogey at times. He doesn't get a lot of double bogeys because because of the mental part of the game that I mean, that just really stands out. And that's a player you're going to see win multiple, multiple, multiple majors. I think I, I can see him getting up in the four or five range pretty darn quick. Um, so I think I like the idea, like, you said he was outside 20 to one at every major for the rest of the year. I, I like betting him at all, all the majors right now. Cause if he wins one <coughs> or any turn, any other tournament before any of these other majors, though, you will not get those numbers when those events come around, you know, the Monday before those events, he's going to be in like the 18 um, to 20. So going and betting him outright, I think at all four majors makes a lot of sense. I like that. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. And I just generally just a like, side note, not nothing to do really with the players, but <laughs> no, for sure. Um, and then finally, uh, anyone that's still watching, you can get in our free roll this week. Uh, another free roll on DraftKings. Uh, all you have to do is like the video below and comment with your DK handle, and then uh, throw me your pick to win this week as well, and you can get in the, the free roll. So if you're not a Roto Pros member and you're watching this. Uh, you can go get a free trial over at rotopros.com. Uh, you get into our Slack chat. You Over at rotopros.com, you can get Dane's article every week. It will be out tomorrow afternoon to evening. Um, so read that over. But to get into our Slack chat where we have weather updates, we have our entire player pool, you get access to our cheat sheet, one-on-one -on -one coaching with both of us um, as well. You can get a free trial. And then use promo code RP50, and you get 50% off once that trial's up. Um, on your first payment there. So a pretty good deal there. Get over, see what we're all about at Roto Pros. We've been hitting a lot of winners. Uh, we're getting close on uh, binking some 
some GPPs here on PGA. And Dane's been absolutely crushing it in college basketball as well as EPL every single day. Make sure to check our Twitter account later tonight. I'm going to post even more winning pictures from Dane. So make sure to hey, check that out. Hey, we just did an app today, plus seven and a half. They won outright college they, basketball. You, they Hit did? the March Madness hot and heavy, yeah. Yes. Okay, I, I tailed you on that one, so I seen you post that. And they won outright. They were plus seven and a half. They won oh, outright. So just yeah. hot fire. Hot fire over at Into the Pro tournament. Season. Into the tournament. March Madness. Yes, March Madness coming up. I think we're even going to do videos. I haven't even talked to Dane about it, but I'm pretty sure that Dane would be up for doing a March Madness video. Um, I'm not the big college basketball guy, so I can be the guy asking all the dumb questions. Um, for everybody that has a question, and Dane can give us all the info so we all can be red hot fire lineups. Awesome. Yeah, look out for that. We could do that early next week. So, uh, so this, the brackets will be out Sunday night, and the tournament starts Thursday. So there's kind of a – there is a lag in there. So, yeah, maybe early next week be on the lookout for that. Stay tuned, everyone. we got a lot going on over at Roto Pros. Thanks for joining us tonight. Again, like the video, comment with your pick to win below. And we'll see you in chat, everyone. Thanks a lot.